I have unfortunately no financial relationships to disclose. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about workstations, uh, laptops, your phone, televisions, uh, go over some exercises that you can do, and then uh, at the end we'll open up for questions. So what is the right workstation for you? I don't know. That's the honest answer. Is it a sitting desk? Is it a standing desk? Is it a laptop? So how do you know this is the right one for you? Is there something better? The honest answer is, is it set up correctly, making it safe? And are you comfortable? Now, the biggest question I always get is, how long should I sit? Or how long should I stand? There you go. Sitting, 30 to 40 minutes. All right? After that, you want to get up and move. Go get something to eat. Go get something to drink. Walk around. Whatever. Okay? <coughs> standing. If you're standing at a workstation, 15, 20 minutes. And then you want to move. You want to get something to eat, something to drink. You want to sit down. No longer than that. All right? So, whether you sit or stand or use a laptop, the important thing is, and this is where everything starts, it's your posture. Okay? You don't want to be slouched. You don't want to be sitting like you're in the Army. You want to be right here in the middle. Okay? Here. Here. Right in the middle. So, how do you find, we call this neutral. How do you find neutral? You're going to go to what I call the extremes. So, first, everybody sitting here, everybody sitting at home, slouch. Slouch right now in your chair. If you're standing up, slouch while you're standing. Okay? So, this is one extreme. Now, you're going to go to the other extreme here. You're going to sit all the way up straight, shoulders back, chest out, like you're in the Army. And hut. Now, find the middle point between these two. That's neutral. That is how you practice it throughout the day, every day, for the next two to three weeks until your muscles adapt to this position. Okay? You slouch, you arch, you relax in the middle. And then after three weeks, your postural muscles will adapt to this position. And then if you start to lose it, your muscles will talk. You have to have a good ear and listen and say, oh, wait, I need to get back into neutral. And this will work anywhere. Riding the bus, on a train, sitting on your couch, in the car at a red light, always at a red light, not while it's green, please. All right. So now you've got your posture set. Now you move to your workstation. Is it set up appropriately? So how do you know? Sitting back in your chair. The top of your screen, the top of the monitor is eye level. All right. If it's eye level, your chin will be down naturally looking at the screen. Your shoulders will relax. Your back is supported by the chair here. More important, your elbow is about 90 degrees. Okay? Right here, it's resting on the armrest. If you're comfortable with the armrest, terrific. Do you need it? Not necessarily. How do you feel? Is it comfortable for you? Okay? Where your hands end is where the keyboard will be, and your wrist should be straight. All right? Your hip should be a little higher than your knee, so your lap is going to be angled down in this direction. The edge of the chair should not dig into the back of your leg, so there'd be no pressure there. And your feet should be flat on the floor. If you are shorter in stature and your feet don't touch, you need a footrest. If you don't have a footrest, a phone book, a couple reams of paper, whatever. As long as your feet are in contact with something to support your legs and take the weight off your back. All right? If you have a sciatic condition, you want this chair lower so your hip is below your knee and your knees are higher up so your lap is going to be angled in this direction. That'll put the nerve in a slack in position. You'll be much more comfortable. All right? So all of that is there. And I believe we're posting this so this will be available to everyone. Same rules apply to a standing station. Screen is eye level. Everything is in front of you. You want to be facing this directly. You don't want this off to the side. Because that's going to bring your neck and your back into the equation. You can't sit like this all day and not expect to have some discomfort. Again, elbow, 90 degrees. Wrist straight. Where your hands end is where the keyboard sits. Okay? Back's nice and straight. There's that neutral posture. Feet flat on the floor. Maybe you have a footstool or a footrest here for an alternate position. I love alternatives. Wonderful. 
Okay, switch your posture up, switch your position, keep moving. That's the motto here, how you move is why we're here. Right? This is actually here uh, an anti-fatigue mat. Nice rubber mat for the person to stand on, very comfortable. What is the mat? The mat looks something like this. It's usually recycled rubber and it's usually slip resistant. It's wear resistant, it's firm, but it's very comfortable when you stand on it. I actually have three of these in my kitchen by the sink, the stove, and the counter. Stand on it all the time, it's wonderful. Usually under the floors, it's concrete. Very uncomfortable. All right, again, is it safe? Are you comfortable? There are many kinds of workstations. Some people have it over a treadmill. I've actually seen this one. I do not recommend this. They're actually walking while they're working. It's like, I can walk, talk, and chew gum. Yeah, not really. I wouldn't want to do this. I don't recommend this for anybody. Uh, this is something like a Veridesk or an Ergotron where you physically have to lift it up to stand. Now, for some, that's okay, but for others, that's a lot of weight because the computer's resting on it. Here we have somebody riding a bike. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get my exercise in and work on my cardio. Yeah, well, I don't think that seat's going to be very comfortable. I can pretty much guarantee after 15 minutes, she's not going to be able to maintain this posture. And the screen is definitely not eye level. I'm going to get to that in a laptop in a minute. This person here, I'm assuming it's the lights, but I think we've all felt like this person here. What am I doing? Is this right? I don't know. Is it safe? Is it comfortable? Okay. Other alternatives on a sitting workstation, your glasses. If you wear progressive lenses, which means the top half is for distance and the bottom half is for reading, you want to lower your screen. This person's screen here, you can see, is about eye level for her. But what is she doing? She's tilting her head back. The first time I saw this, I said to the person, like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm reading. I'm like, why are you tilting your head? Oh, I have progressive lenses. I'm reading out the bottom half. I'm like, oh, hold on a second. Lower the screen. Her head was straight. If you do a lot of transcribing, you look at material and then you're typing it onto the screen. You want some kind of board to support the material so you can just look down and up at the screen. This is a document arm. You can get this at Staples, Home Depot, or uh, uh, some other office type of store. Attach this to the side of the monitor here. You can connect the paper and then your eyes are just moving side to side instead of down to the table and then back up to the screen. Most of the injuries associated with workstations are repetitive injuries. You do it constantly over and over and over again. It's not what happens in a week or a month. It's a year, two years, five years, ten years. All right. Monitors. Nowadays, the craze is, oh, the more the better. Maybe. Okay. So, some people have two. Some people have three. I've seen people with six. Is it set up correctly? So, if you have two monitors and you use them equally, great. Sit in the middle. Be right between them, right here. So half the time you look left and half the time you look right. If you have three monitors and you use them equally, equidistant from one another, a third, a third, a third. If you use one more than the other, that one is center stage. The other one you put off to the side. And I would say you put it on your writing side. So on your non-writing side, you will put the phone. And I'll get to that in a minute. Again, many alternatives. Lots of monitors. Here's one, one monitor that actually has three different screens on it. This is a gaming system. Six monitors. This person here, um, yeah. <laughs> 24 monitors. Uh, it's a finance thing. I can't help this person. <laughs> there are some things I just can't fix. Keyboards. Again, remember, if you want that keyboard within reach, you want your wrist straight. Is it comfortable? Now, a lot of people I see, they have these pads. You know what these pads are for? For your palm. I see a lot of people resting on their wrist. And I said, well, how do you feel? Like, you know, I'm getting this pins and needles. I'm like, oh, really? You know, that's carpal tunnel. What? Yeah, that's carpal tunnel setting. Or your palm. Or the mouse. Or the keyboard. If you're comfortable, 
But if you're not, listen to your body, it's going to talk. Many alternatives. Okay. This is a rounded keyboard. It's actually sloped on a hill. This one is uh, separated by a distance, so your hands would actually be here, which is more of a neutral position instead of internally rotating. There are keyboards that come in two pieces, so again, it can maintain this neutral position. This one here is actually sloped, so your hands would be more in this position, which is more of a neutral position instead of your hands like this, which is pronated. Okay. Again, it's a comfort thing. What works for one person may not work for another. Your mouse, think of your mouse as an egg. You want to grip it gently. You don't want to crush the mouse, although sometimes you may want it. All right? You want to move from your elbow and not your wrist. Because the elbow, the muscles are much bigger, so they won't fatigue as fast. The wrist muscles are much smaller, much easier to fatigue, overwork, start to become inflamed. Okay? Uh, again, there's that mouse pad and the, the, the rest for your palm. You want your wrist straight, your hand cupped nicely over the mouse, not flexed, not extended, not deviated in one way or another, straight on. There are many types of mouses out there. What is comfortable for you? Is it a regular one? Is it a joystick? They call this the clamshell because it kind of opens and closes. It goes up and down a little bit. I have this one. This is called a hand shoe. This is quite comfortable. Your whole hand is resting on it. It moves as one piece. There's one, again, this is more of a neutral position. And then there's the others with a joystick with a ball for the thumb. These tend to actually report more injuries because the thumb is constantly moving to move the cursor, and that becomes overuse very quickly. Your chair. Is the chair comfortable? Is it set up right? Every chair should be adjustable in height. It should have this lumbar support here. It should have this waterfall edge so it slopes away so it won't dig into the back of your leg. It has a five-star pedestal. It has casters that should roll, and it should swivel. The newest chairs are very, very adaptable. The armrests come up. They come in at an angle. They move in. They move forward and back. There is added padding here. There are many, many, many alternatives. But is it safe? Bad posture, rolling right off. Um, yeah, good luck getting work done. <laughs> Unless you're counting sheep, if that's the work, then you, this is the chair for you. Uh, this person's actually on a balance board, and you can see how she's already twisting. So not safe. This gentleman's actually trying to use his chair in reverse, which some people have done, but I can guarantee you he's going to start to flex. This is a gaming chair, which is very adaptable and very comfortable, but most of these run close to $3,000, and I don't know about you, but that's beyond my budget. Uh, the balls, again, not safe. These chairs, you can see how easily they tilt, and there's the bad posture. This young lady, this, this is actually a little bit beyond neutral. She needs to kind of relax a little bit, but her feet are also not really contacting well. It's just the balls of her feet. I don't know how long she's going to make this position. Laptop. First question. Are you an occasional user, or are you full-time? Occasional means an hour or two. If you're doing an hour or two a day, no big deal. Just be comfortable. Have it in front of you. Have the screen at a good angle so that the uh, angle is minimized so you're not bending so much, your wrists are straight, and that you're comfortable. All right? Anything more than a couple hours, you are a full-time user. You need some kind of kickstand to elevate it so the screen is now eye level. You will need a second keyboard and a mouse so your wrists are straight, maybe a pad over here for the mouse to sit on. Posture, posture, posture. Don't be like this. Now to your phone. If you're sitting at a desk and you use the phone a lot, you really want to use a headset. Okay? That way your hands are free to type, your hands are free to hit the phone and start talking. If you don't have a headset, the cradle would be the next best thing, but you will start to bend a little bit more. Be weary. Okay? Keep the phone on the non-writing side. So remember, we said the two screens. Your main screen is in front. Your other screen is to the side that you write on. And your non-writing side is the phone. So you can grab your phone and you can write. And not 
grab the phone, and write. And then your cell phone. Alternate sides. Now the cell phone is interesting because we see a lot of people nowadays walking around with their cell phone and they tune everything else out. But this is from Grambling State. The more you bend, the more weight you're putting on your neck. Be careful. It doesn't take much. And when you bend down that low, you will lose your peripheral vision, so you don't see what's coming. So, tips with the handheld devices. You have your life on this. Phone numbers, addresses, pictures, listening to music, so on. RSI, repetitive strain injury, is associated with this type of technology. The repeated use, you see people with their thumbs always typing and texting and whatever. It will catch up. These are small muscles and tendons and ligaments that won't take a lot to be overused. The risk of injury goes up. Okay? The hunched position, the head down, you lose that peripheral vision. Much, much more dangerous. So try never to cradle your phone. Use the headset with this, the earpieces that come with it. Keep the phone in front of you in your field of vision. Keep it below your heart and use a finger at 90 degrees to type. Save your fingers. And by using one finger like this, you'll be using your elbow and your forearm, which the muscles are much bigger than your thumbs. One of our staff had this thumb injury from her phone. I took a wrap and I wrapped her hand for an hour. And she had to type. She's like, this is weird. I'm like, all right, I'll see you in an hour. I came back an hour later, took the wrap off. I'm like, how are you feeling? She's like, yeah, it's better. I'm like, okay. Uh, try to limit your texting to an hour and a half a day. Uh, if it hurts, stop. Okay. You can do stretches. You can stretch your fingers. You can stretch your hands. Stretch your hand. Whatever you can think of. 20 to 30 seconds, two or three reps, both sides. Keep it even. Okay. And always use two hands when you're gripping the phone. Grip it gently. You don't have to crush it, although sometimes you may want to. And then now we're on to the television at home. All right. A couple things to consider. The size of your screen, is it mounted or is it on a stand, and the number of pixels in the distance to set it up. All right. So the regular 1080 HDTV with that number of pixels, you want to be about one and a half to two and a half times whatever that diagonal distance it is. So I picked 60 inch TV. That's five feet across. So you would have to be seven and a half to 12 and a half feet back. That's where you put your couch or your sitting area for the maximum distance to see this picture clearly and for the light not to strain your eyes. Okay. The newer TVs, this ultra high dev TV, one to one and a half times. They have more pixels, the picture is much sharper, so you can actually sit a little closer to this, five to seven and a half feet. It really depends on the type of TV and how big it is. The bigger it is, the further away. Okay. You sit too close, you're gonna strain your eyes. You sit too far, the picture will suffer. And there are even those flat screen TVs that actually curve a little bit. So the problem with those, it's an angle. If you sit too far on an angle, the picture will suffer. And with the TV curving away from you, you will really lose the picture to one side. If you mount it on a wall, you want it to be about 10, 15 degrees up. So you're just looking up a little bit. Not like you're sitting in the front of the movie theater, you know, like, yeah, this is great. Because <laughs> your neck will tell you later on, all right? Lighting in the room, you don't want to place it directly in front of a light because there's going to be glare on the screen. That's going to hurt your eyes. It's going to affect the picture. You want to sit in a room with some light on so that the TV is not the only light in the room because it could be dark one minute, it could be light the other, and that's very harsh on your eyes. It will strain your eyes quickly. All right. And then it's balance. If it's on a stand, whatever it's standing on, make sure it's balanced and that table is steady. If you're mounting it on a wall, have a professional mounted for you so it doesn't move. If it's not balanced, the picture will suffer. And we've all seen those commercials where the TV just falls. That will ruin your day. Okay. Do's and don'ts. Sit straight on. Be comfortable. Get up and walk around. Okay? On a sitcom, a 30-minute thing, no problem. 
You can sit through the whole show. You were watching the World Series last night, the four-hour marathon. You, hopefully, you got up after every inning because some of them were longer than others. Okay? Stretch. Stretch your neck. Stretch your back. I'm going to show you a couple in a minute. Okay? <laughs> and then there's lighting. Remember, sit with the lights on. Don't sit in the dark. No movie theater mode. Okay. So, basic exercises you can do. At your desk, at a chair, in the car at a red light, on the bus, the train. We call this a chin tuck. It's basically just moving your head back. You hold for two or three seconds. Repeat ten times. Easiest way is to do this in front of a mirror so you don't see your head nodding up or down. So you want to come straight back. Most of what we do in this society is flexion forward. So if you just want to work on extending your head up for a couple seconds, 10 times, that's fine too. If anything starts to hurt immediately, please stop. Do these every hour, every other hour. You will feel sore in the back of your neck for the first day or two. Keep going. Muscle soreness, I'm not worried about it. You will work that out. But if it's sharp pain, you'll know the difference. Stop. Okay? you have a pre-existing condition of some sort, maybe you want to check with your doctor before doing any of these. There's a scap retraction. You're going to squeeze your shoulders back. Hold for a couple seconds, set of 10. Okay? Because everything, again, is always forward. So I'm going to have you go the other way. Upper trap stretch. You bring one ear to one shoulder, and then gently pull so you feel that stretch. 20 to 30 seconds and then right the ship and then go the other way so you keep it even. All right? Two or three in one direction, two or three in the other direction. And then this is called the pelvic tilt. You can slouch and stretch your back. You can roll your hips forward and arch your back. Slouch, arch, kind of like you're practicing finding neutral. Just to get your lower back moving. 